LT Spice can be used to check your voltage and current calculations and even help you create solutions to exam questions you create. For instance, you might think that this question might be on uh, the next EE98 exam and you want to be able to make sure you know how to solve it. You can enter it into LT Spice and check it against your hand calculations to check so you would know whether you've mastered the concept or not before the test even started. So let's check it out. Here's the circuit again and we will assign current directions and voltage drops, write the equations and then solve for Vx. So I have I1 going into the node, I have I2 and I3 leaving the node. Um, this is an initial guess on my part. Could be wrong uh, but as long as I'm consistent with how I define my voltage drops and current directions, I'll still get the right answer, except the currents might be coming out um, in an opposite direction. Now, I want you to see I1 is going to equal V1 minus Vx divided by R1. And the reason why it's V1 minus Vx and not Vx minus V1 is I've defined the current going from positive to negative. In the same sense, I2 is going from positive to negative across V4, so that means the voltage drop is Vx minus V2, not V2 minus Vx. And for node Vx, I3 equals Vx my, uh, divided by R3 and not minus Vx divided by R3 because the current is flowing in the same direction as my defined voltage drops. Now V1 is 5 volts and that's pretty easy to see is that I start at ground and I go in a positive potential up 5 volts so that gives me 5 volts there. V2 might cause um, a little bit of difficulty in understanding uh, to node 2 in that notice that this symbol is upside down compared to V1 and I'm going from positive to negative. That means this 3 volts here I'm going more negative 3 volts from ground and so V2 should equal minus 3 volts. Well I can take these equations and this equation and substitute and then I can expand and then I can get my equation for Vx relatively straightforward. Now that I have Vx I can substitute my voltages and resistance values and it turns out to be 2 volts. Notice that the 3, it's a minus 3 when V2 was positive because V2 was minus 3 volts. So when I calculate I1, I get 1 and a half amp. Notice on I2 it's Vx minus V2, but V2 is minus 3 volts, so it's 2 minus a minus, which is 5 divided by 4, which gives me 1 and a quarter amp. And then Vx divided by R3 is 2 divided by 8, or a quarter of an amp. Now these circuits can be sometimes unintuitive and it might be hard to tell, well do those answers make sense? Well, the current should sum to zero, that's physics. And you can't violate the laws of physics. So I1 should equal I2 plus I3, and it does. So this is a valid solution, um, but still mistakes can be made. I make a lot of mathematical errors myself. I could have made a mistake in the checking because I kind of knew what I thought the answer would be. Could have made a mistake up here and then checked it wrong. So it's always nice to have another way to check your work. So I've entered this circuit into LT Spice. Make sure ground is here. V1 negative to positive on node 1 and node 2 is positive to negative. I have the resistances and these net names. And I just run the simulation and I get 5 volts on node 1. Vx is 2. And V at node 2 is minus 3, just like I had predicted. 
Now, something interesting is that the currents are all negative. And the reason why is that an LT spice, um, it has an internal direction that it thinks the current or the voltage drop should occur across. And so, um, and you can't tell what it is by looking on the schematic. If I go back here, I have applied a positive to negative, assuming that voltage drop. And so it, I'm assuming that that'll be the direction of positive current in that resistor. LT spice, it has an internal one. You can't tell. Uh, another lecture, I will tell you how to tell which way is it going. But um, for right now, I just know that, hey, these might be negative, but it's still those currents sum to zero. And so the solution is valid. Now, if it really bothers you that the currents are going in the wrong direction, all you have to do is rotate the resistance. And so you would click F7, click on the device, and then click on Rotate Twice, and stamp it back down. And you would do it for each one of these resistors. Save and rerun the simulation, and you get the currents are all the same, but now the sign is correct. Um, now, these DC simulations are just one thing you can do in LT Spice. You can do an AC analysis, and you can even do an AC analysis at a single frequency that capacitors and ductances have an impedance, which is a unit of ohms, and you can treat it, the analysis, just like a regular, almost an analysis at DC with resistors. Um, you can also see how the circuit responds in frequency, and you can even see how all these things change in time.